Oh, good Saturday morning. You've got Bad Bat Michelle and Kendra. Hello. Coming to you live. <laughs> you know, we always like to talk about hot topics. So here we are with a hot topic, something that's been extremely topical and passionate for us to, you know, educate people on. So yeah. As many of you know, Kendra and I are business partners. Our brand is God's Girl Economy. We are teaching faith-based women, kingdom entrepreneurs to escape hell's economy. We educate the difference between Satan's economy and kingdom economy. And so we want to discuss the, the topic of, do you know how to vet a business opportunity when it comes to direct sales, network marketing, affiliate marketing, all that stuff, right? So Kendra, what do you have to say? I love pouring into women who want to make a difference. And I think that, that that's what we are mainly about, right? Sheesh. The Lord is asking us to do life and support your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, right? And that's what we're teaching. Entrepreneurial, faith-driven women to come out of Satan's economy, like you said, create their own economy so that then we can further his kingdom here on earth. We can master the marketplace for his glory. Amen. <laughs> I was raised up in the network marketing industry. My nickname is the MLM brat. My dad was that guy that drove 800 miles to do a meeting for his downline, whether a thousand people showed, three people showed, or no one showed. That's uh, how, you know, the industry rolled back then, right? I keep saying he's the OG of MLM, the original gangster. So, so, and he still managed to grow and build a million dollar empire. I can remember once upon a time, he was making $7,000 a day with the compensation plan that he had. And he had, he was, maxing out that compensation plan. So he's now retired 87 years old and he's Santa Claus during Christmas time. So, uh, but I, I kind of feel like there's this kind of awkward conversation going around. And for me, having been raised up in the industry, you know, when you, uh, you, know, you get in a fight with your siblings and somebody else talks smack about your sibling and you're going to stand up for them. But if you're, you know, you're in a fight, you're the only one that can talk smack, right? I, I kind of feel that way. I have that kind of protective, protective guard when people talk smack about network marketing, right? Well, I and the industry has such a bad rap. You guys, do you not understand that this industry was modeled after the gospel and the life of Jesus Christ, right? Going That's two right. by two to share the gospel. That is what this industry was modeled after. So what say you, Babette, on why we have such this a bad rap? Well, look, here's the thing. The, the great thing about, about direct sales network marketing is anyone can join. The thing that's bad about direct sales or network marketing is anyone can join. So people are flawed. So that's why the industry can be flawed. You know, so I, I did leave the industry in 2012 because I was privy because of who my dad has been in the industry, who I, I've been in the industry. I was privy to the meeting after the meeting where a lot of shady things were going on. You know, contracts were handed out, being grandfathered in at highest ranks was going on behind the scenes. So then they would parade these million dollar income earners across the stage where, you know, it, it led the downlines to believe that their leaders were you know, max out the comp plan or top of top ranks and companies because they did it the way that the downline is expected to do and that it, that wasn't happening. And I was like, are you kidding me? This is really what's going on in the industry right now. So I left for 12 years, vetted 28 companies. My search, my, my, all, my background is also alternative medicine, nutrition um, and personal training. So I have been vetting integrity from product ingredient to company leadership and founders of companies. So that's what I've been vetting is integrity. You know, my mom died suddenly of ovarian cancer in 2002. She was using baby powder. I won't name the name. The leading ingredient in the baby powder is talc. And fast forwarding to today, we now know that talc is a leading contributor to ovarian cancer. So 
when my mother died suddenly, diagnosed April 10th and died on April 23rd, I made it my life's mission to really start doing, you know, deep a deep dive in researching ingredients. There's so many products that have what's called the dirty 30 in it. There's so many products that have weed in it, soy in it. Mm -hmm. You know, soy is a precursor to breast cancer. And that's something that I've taught in my world of coaching, nutrition, and that type of thing. I've taught women to stay away from products that have soy in it. So that's a, quite a controversial conversation as well. So, but yeah, so we are here to talk about how to vet a viable business opportunity in the space of direct sales, because at the end of the day, it is business. It is but business unfortunately or fortunately most people join an opportunity because their best friend has joined maybe a sibling has joined maybe a parent has joined but what's really mind-blowing to me kendra is there are even seven figure income earners that do not know how to effectively vet a viable business opportunity in this space Mm -hmm. when it comes to the details that we're going to discuss here today. Yeah, I totally agree. And and we want to show you why direct sales and why now I think it's so important to have in your back pocket, right? Global sales for direct sales, $325 billion annually. What? And 250 million global global distributors. I mean, we've got people, you said earlier, the good thing about MLM direct sales is anyone can join. Anyone can do this. And the, the bad thing is anyone can do it. But 5,500 people join a direct sales network marketing opportunity daily in the U.S. alone, right? And this industry is recession proof where record numbers and incomes are created even during a downturn economy. Say what? Say <laughs> what? Recession proof your income, guys. Now more than ever is it, it's just essential. And when as we go through slide by slide, you'll have a better understanding of why we say this. Look, here, here's the thing. Here, the thing about direct sales is it levels the playing field. You can take a broke single mom without a formal education and a burnt out doctor. And they have that same opportunity for success. You know, the industry is colorblind, sex neutral, you know, doesn't matter if you're male, doesn't matter if you're female, doesn't matter if you were born into a rich family, doesn't matter if you're born into a poor family, doesn't matter if you had an opportunity to go, you know, to college or not, that type of thing. It, it really, truly levels the playing field. However, comma. Not all companies are created equal. So that's what we're here to discuss today. So what do we got next? Absolutely. And here are some reasons why we want to recession proof your income. If you were following the trends during 2020 and 2022, and you remember what we all went through during that time period, right? There was a select group of people and in industries who made fortunes during that downturn economy, the most devastating times in our economic history. And what were, who were those? Those are people that turned to social media. That was the one outlet and avenue that we could broadcast so far, right? Online entrepreneurs, e-commerce, the direct sales industry, real estate, of course, and the wealthy elite. Let's talk a little bit about Babette, the elite. You have. Yeah. To say yeah. So here, here's the thing about the elite Hollywood in particular. There are some people in Hollywood that said that time frame that we all dealt with while companies were closing, people were losing, businesses were losing money. There were many Hollywood people that said that that time frame was the best economic time frame in their entire life. So, and in that that paragraph at the top of the slide, that time frame was in history one of the most devastating times economically mm -hmm. compared to the Great Depression. Y'all, I, 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 we live in Nashville. Nashville tourism came to a screeching halt. Mm -hmm. I think I was reading recently that, you know, just that one, there's one street in Nashville called Broadway where all the honky tonks are that generates about $800 million a week. Mm -hmm. 
And, you know, that shut down. All the while, Hollywood was raking it in, you know? And why were they raking it in? You know, we're not, we're not here to beat up Hollywood, Hollywood, but the importance of understanding that is what we're going to teach on one of these slides is residual income, mm -hmm. you know? So let's take a look at this. I think the beautiful thing about the direct sales industry, network marketing is lives and incomes are changed dramatically by understanding leverage, right? When you work and you're working for yourself, there's only one of you. So you can't, you have to do a whole bunch of work. You have to work tons of hours. You have to put forth a ton of money. I'm a brick and mortar business owner. Let me tell you, it was not cheap to open that. And it's not cheap to run it every day. <laughs> Why not leverage other people's time, right? It's not just your efforts. It's a whole team of people's efforts that are paying you basically other people's products, utilizing their products to then turn around and, and make an income other people's money and other people's relationships. Babette, what have, what do you have to say on the leverage? Well, I'll tell you what billionaires and billionaires understand leverage marketing. That's how they grow and sustain their wealth. Many look, and here's another thing too. I don't know. I can't remember if we have it on one of our slides, but the internet is creating 1700 millionaires a day. What do you think they're doing? They're Never. leveraged marketing. We call we, it OPT, OPP, OPM, OPR. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. Oh my gosh. <laughs> of course you were. I'm going to let you address this slide really quick. And we're just going to touch on it, you guys. But I would definitely get a hold of these two books. They're really nice. Yeah. So this is Courtney Epps. She's got these two books called Why You'd Be Brain Dead Not to Own a Home-Based Business. Even if you already have a traditional business, and especially if you are a, a W-2 employee, the average medium household, they say these that these are statistics that are found on the internet, but she, uh, Courtney highlights this, but the average household makes $61,000 per year. That same household will have an average of $12,000 in taxes, you know, FICA, federal, state, and local, which leaves that household $49,000 per year. The at, Now, this was before what we're going through right now, economically, inflation, all that stuff, This these stats came out, I think, in 2018. But the average cost of living in the U.S. is $53,000, creating a deficit or a debt, leaving those families in debt by $4,000 per year. So number four here, by having a home-based business, you can save through tax incentives $4,000 to $8,000 a year at tax time, even if you just attempt to earn an income. There's something like 450 tax, incenti tax incentives that are available to home-based business owners. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's really imperative, I think. And that's why we, we say direct sales, why direct sales and why now? It's because people are not able to make it on what they are collecting as a W-2 earner. Did you know that taxes, W-2 taxes, is one of the highest industries for our government? Credit card debt and, and also... Loan debt. So the, the top grossing incomes for our government, like Kendra said, is credit card debt, student loan debt, W-2 employee taxes. Mm -hmm. And there was one other... Oh, Check this out. Insufficient funds through banking. Yeah. I was talking to a friend of mine who's a banker, who's vice president of a bank of a bank. And he was telling me that that's their number one grossing income is insufficient funds. Yeah, that's through, insane. It is. That's insane. So I, you know, I, I mentioned earlier, I'm a brick and mortar business owner. I was an RN. I should say I am an RN, right? 27 years, but I was able to retire from that field and then work more as an entrepreneur because of these tax credits, because there are so many things that you can write off, including a membership into a direct sales opportunity, possibly some of the products that you may be buying because you're the walking billboard. I mean, there's so many, I'm not, a, I'm not an accountant. And so I'm not going to go into all the specifics, but at the end of the day, when you own a home-based business, you end up putting more money in your pocket and paying out less to the government 
because you have that in your pocket. So we say, what do we say? For those people that say they can't afford to start a home-based business, we say you can't afford not, not to. Not to. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this so, is the slide that is so imperative to the title of our message today. Do you know how to vet a business opportunity or company right now in the direct sales industry? And again, Babette mentioned we are seeing six, seven, eight figure earners that don't know how to do this. They don't understand this part. And this is one of my favorite points of conversation here. Understanding the S-curve and the four phases of a company in 10 plus years. Understanding timing is critical for success. Unfortunately, most people don't know this, but this is the growth curve in any industry really, but in the direct sales industry, phase one is formulation. Phase two is momentum. Phase three is critical mass and phase four is stabilization. At the point of stabilization, there's not a lot of growth. It's steady and pretty flatlined. So you know what happens to your heart when your heart flatlines, right? But fortunes are made during the first three phases of business growth. Understanding this could be the difference in creating generational wealth for you and your family. Mm -hmm. All right. This is another one of my favorite slides. So how to make a fortune in the next trillion dollar industry, the wellness revolution. This is Paul Zane Pilzer. Pilzer predicts that within the next decade, money spent on disease prevention will surpass that spent on disease treatment. And oh my goodness, that is music to my ears, especially after what we just all went through. So yeah. And music to my ears coming from a nursing background, I, I became disenchanted, disheartened, I guess, as my career kept going and things were changing within that industry. And I was really searching for the root cause of the illness, not masking it. Right. Which I think our medical industry is doing. So this is really close to my heart as well. I bet. Yeah, I, I had a conversation, a, a video call with a doctor yesterday, you know, that handles hormone replacement therapy and stuff. And it was interesting to hear their side of what what was going on, according to the CDC and what was required mm -hmm. of met the people in the medical industry during that time frame, it, it would make your toes curl. It just, it was insane. So another great topic here too, is understanding the math and the roadmap map for success in one to 10 years. Unfortunately, most people quit before they make this a reality, but it takes in one to 10 years, it takes commitment and time. The problem is most people don't understand this and they quit before the harvest starts to bear fruit. But your first one to three years, you can literally fire your boss. In three to four years, the fruits of your labor begin and passive residual income starts to grow. We're already realizing in five months with our company, we're already seeing incredible residual income. Yes. Um, two to five years, you can achieve financial freedom. Five to 10 years, you can create generational wealth. And with the right opportunity, you will never have to worry about money again. But again, you have to stay committed. You get, you got to stay the course. I see so many people chasing shiny objects and promoting one thing hot and heavy, and then they're off promoting the next thing hot and heavy. And mm -hmm. I, I don't, I don't believe you can grow any stability doing business that way. No, I don't think so. And what we're saying, you guys. Um, I think we're coming from a point going, look, you can't afford to not have a side gig. Multiple streams of income in this economy today is really important, right? But don't just <laughs> quit your job and then go full force into direct sales. What we are trying to tell you is get in here and work it. Now, there is a saying, if you work it like a hobby, you're going to get paid like a hobby, right? So, Think of it as a business, right? And the more commitment, the more fortitude you have within that direct sales side gig, you can then turn around and fire your boss is what we're saying. But we do not recommend you just kind of jump full force and <laughs> fire 
that hurt your no, body. No, and there, there's things to measure by too. You, you know, you, you definitely need to be able to cover your bills. You definitely need to have six months of emergency money set aside in the event of an emergency. There, there are rules that do apply to that number one step there before you go, oh, I'm going to go fire my boss now. So, <laughs> Right, exactly. But let's talk a little bit about linear income and residual income and creating true time, freedom, and wealth. So understanding active and passive income. Linear income is you work once, you get paid once. You work and you get paid on your own efforts. That's kind of linear income. Trading your time for money. If you don't work, you're not going to get paid, right? Versus residual income. You work once and you get paid over and over again. You and your team work hard and then you will start to get paid for not just your effort, but all of your efforts. That's trading leverage for money, creating time and financial freedom. Going back to leverage marketing, though one of the first slides, right? Yes. Join the 5k culture club. We <laughs> say it's not about the money. It's about the impact. We're creating the largest network of five to $10,000 monthly residual income earners in history. Yes. It's something that's really exciting to me too, is what if every single person you knew before they even got going in the morning, had their first cup of coffee, had an extra five to $10,000 a month in their bank account. You know, so our goal is we, we hear this conversation a lot. We hear leaders in the industry saying, oh, I created five millionaires or eight millionaires. Mm -hmm. We don't care about that. We care about having 20, 30, 50,000, 100,000, 300,000 families earning five to $10,000 a month. And of course, in this industry, you can make a lot more than that. But I did a poll recently of about 200 people that are in network marketing. And I asked if, you know, has anybody made, has anybody ever made $5,000? Because I, I, I write about this in my blog. That's the sweet spot. That first $5,000, it's hard. That's the hardest money to get to in this industry. But once you make that money, it's like a domino effect. You, you can't lay down in front of it to stop it if you tried. But mm -hmm. in this poll, I asked it if they had ever made $5,000 and every single one of them said I hadn't even made $500. I hadn't even made enough money to cover my own monthly requirements of auto ship. So we're here to change that. We're, we're, we're on a mission to, yes. you know, change the failure rate and increase the success rate for sure. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I think we're going to end it here, but I think it's really important. I'm going to try to get this off the screen. Having said that last slide, we are on a mission to help entrepreneurial women to make that right. But I think we talked a lot about vetting. How do you vet an opportunity? And I believe it comes down to not only the products, right? We talked about leveraging other people's products, leveraging other people's time, leveraging other people's money, but a compensation plan, vetting a comp plan from the inside out. I would like you to speak a little bit on that because I think it's important for people to understand why well, yeah. network marketing I, I, is a bad rap, right? Yeah, I'm glad that you bring that up because here's here's the problem in the industry, okay? And and by the way, there are more more companies that launch in the network marketing space that don't make it past their first year to two than are actually in existence because the industry is heavily regulated by the FTC, the FCC and the AGs, the attorney generals. Yeah. So, there's not a lot that companies can get away with without being heavily vetted you know, legally and then being shut down. So unlike uh, the FDA, unlike <laughs> right. <other Okay>. business. <laughs> no kidding, right. Yeah. But here's, what's interesting. This is a conversation that's driving me crazy in this industry, right? I can talk about a pharmaceutical drug for that's treating a certain disease condition, but I can't talk about a nutritional product that's treating a disease condition. In this industry, you can't even name a disease that you have that you're getting profound results with, with the nutritional products, because you can actually go to jail and the company can get shut down. How disgusting is that? That's another topic for <laughs> one day. But the point of vetting 
a compensation plan, unfortunately, most compensation plans are designed to roll up to the top 1%. A little bit of money trickles into the, to the bottom base of the field. But then, because the whole goal for a lot of companies that launch is get the, the company to $100 million, a $1 billion, and then they turn around and sell it. That happened to my dad in a company and they sold it, you know, the company that he was with at that time, they sold it to a telecommunications company and they dismantled the field. So the, the, the people in the field that got the company to that point of a billion dollars and the owner turned around, turned around and sold it and none of the distributors got a piece of that action. So that's one of the true issues in understanding a compensation plan. And so that's why Kendra and I felt it necessary to come out and have this conversation. So that look, there, there's nothing wrong with joining your best friend. There's nothing wrong with joining a sibling or a family member, but here's the problem with that. Most of the time, that person you join through most of the time quits and then you're orphaned. And then you don't have that, you know, structural leadership in place because the person that got you in didn't understand how to vet a, an opportunity in the first place, got you involved. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're trying to cut that stuff out. We're trying to clean up the industry. So what do you say, Kendra? This is what I think most people think when you tell them, uh, I, I just joined a new network marketing company and they're like, Oh, is it one of those? <laughs> right. Okay. Right. But guess what? Corporate America is one of these. Your CEO, your president of your company is here. They're making decisions for everybody else down here. You will never be able to make what they're making. Right. However, here you will be able to make that. Yeah. I like that. I like that analogy. An inverted pyramid scheme. <laughs> Not to mention, remember I said this industry is heavily regulated by the attorney general, the FTC, the FCC. That illustration that Kendra just drew, those get shut down because of how they are regulated. So. Right. Yeah. And I know that people have been burned in the past. I'm one of them. People go, oh, I have PTSD from network marketing. Okay. So maybe you weren't in the right company. You weren't on the right team. You didn't have the right compensation plan. This is why we would like to help you to vet the companies. Yes. Yeah. And guess what? What? We don't charge you a thing to help you figure it out either. No. We, aren't, we aren't one of those people. We're not going to charge you thousands of dollars to consult and coach you on how, and helping you understand how to vet a viable opportunity. Because here's the thing. Most people are just looking for a way to change their family's life financially, put money in the bank account and put food on the table and keep the roof over their head, especially in today's yeah. economic environment. In yeah. four months, yeah. we literally made more than most people make in a year. So it can be done, you guys. Yeah. <laughs> and it's oh my gosh. Woo! Yeah. And it's just mind blowing. So. <laughs> and what's it, isn't it? There's nothing more exciting to, we get paid every single day. I know. That's what's really cool. Daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly pay is what's happening for us. And weren't we at first, like we had no idea. I mean, it, the great thing about this, you don't have to have your head wrapped around the entire compensation plan to earn money. But like we would look in our back office and see a certain amount of money one day and the next day it had been like six tupled. <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's insane. So we love you guys. We just, uh, we hope that you find the right opportunity, especially right now. You can't afford not to. That's right. That's right. Well, we're excited. We love you guys. Thanks for hanging out. If you have any questions, concerns, you're looking into the industry and you want some input or some direction, please reach out. We would love to help because here's what we're doing. We are creating the largest army of kingdom entrepreneurs earning five to $10,000 a month. Yes. We're teaching people how to create their own economy. Here's what's, here's what's interesting in the, in the world that Kendra and I are spending time in. There's a group of people that are doom and gloom. Oh my gosh, the economy, inflation, all this stuff. There's another group of people 
that are kicking butt and taking names. They're not impacted by what's going on economically. As a matter of fact, they are prospering and and creating wealth during this downturn economy. So, yeah. So we don't want you to just survive. We want you to thrive. That's right. Absolutely. Come, Come thrive with us. <laughs> come if thrive. You if you if you haven't found the business model yet, come thrive with us. We can help you out. Absolutely. All right, you guys have a great Saturday. We'll see you next week. Thanks for hanging out.